Stay tuned now for Robert Young, starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening, there's more fun-packed comedy when you set your dial to NBC for The Bob Hope Show and The Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. Guest star tomorrow on The Bob Hope Show will be Miss Jane Wyman, and you'll hear a fun-filled comedy sketch featuring this talented actress, as well as a laugh-packed monologue by Bob. Later tomorrow evening, listen to the mirth and music on the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, when Phil is joined by Elliot Lewis and Julius Abruzio for 30 minutes of hilarious comedy antics. That's tomorrow night on the NBC Radio Network. And now it's Father Knows Best on NBC. <laughs> now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. <laughs> Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. Have you ever noticed that the last two pictures on a roll of film are not much to look at? The reason is that people are always discovering that there are a couple of pictures left on an old film in their camera, so they shoot most anything just to finish off the roll. This sounds like a fairly harmless practice, but let me warn you, it can sometimes lead to grave complications. Like this. Now look here, Kathy. There are a couple of pictures left on this roll. Come on outside and I'll take your picture. Oh, goody, can I put on some lipstick? Of course not. Can I put on one of Betty's dresses and some beads? And... No, Kathy, it's not that important. All I want to do is finish this roll of film so we can get it developed. Come on, we'll go out in the backyard. Now, uh, stand over there next to the maple tree. I'll see if I can remember how to work this thing. Hey, Mom, I gotta go see Claude Mesner. Want your picture taken, Bob? Yes, why don't you stand next to Kathy there and I'll take both of you. I haven't got time now, Mom. This will only take a second. Come on. Well, make it snappy because uh, I've got to take these blue jeans to Claude because he's in a phone booth. Yes, well, it'll only take half... <laughs> <laughs> you have to do what? Claude Mesner's in a telephone booth. Uh, that's what I thought you said. But... Why does he need blue jeans? He ripped a big hole in his pants and he's too embarrassed to walk home. <laughs> I see. It's quite an emergency. I can see that it is. Well, we'll hurry this along. Why doesn't he walk home backwards? Oh, dry it. <laughs> oh, turn blue. All right now, children. Look sweet and natural. Well, make up your mind. Which do you want, sweet or natural? <laughs> Just try to smile a little. And put the blue jeans down, bud. Wait a minute. There comes Daddy. Maybe you'll want to get in this picture, too. Hurry it up. I can't wait. Hi, Daddy. Want your picture taken? He can't hear you, shrimp. What'd you say, kitten? Want your picture taken? Sure. As soon as I get my bathing suit on. Hello, honey Hello, dear well, What's going on here? A little photography? Oh, it's nothing at all I just found we had a couple of pictures left on this old film So I thought I'd finish it off Good idea We haven't taken any pictures of the kids for a long time now Ought to get Betty in this, too Where is she? Upstairs, I think Kathy, why don't you go call Betty? Okay Hey, I can't wait much longer I, I, I gotta get down there right away Why? Where do you have to go in such a hurry? It's an errand of mercy, Dad Oh? Claude Mesner's in a phone booth. Without food or water? <laughs> Without pans. <laughs> he ripped his, and I gotta get him some good ones down to him so he can get out of there. Well, I wouldn't rush it. It's a nice feeling to know that Claude is being contained. <laughs> at least temporarily. Claude's embarrassed. That I doubt. All right. 
Are you ready, bud? Wait a minute. I, I think you've got a bad angle there, Margaret. Uh, uh, let me have the camera for a minute. I just want to get a quick shot of it. Well, now, if you shoot him more from this angle, you'll get a better background, uh, more contrast. Snap it up, Dad. Margaret, is this camera any good anymore? As far as I know, it is. Seems like the last batch we took had a lot of light streaks on them. That was because you tried to develop them yourself. No, it was the camera. Wait a minute, there's Ed Davis over in his garage. He might know what's wrong with it. He's quite a camera hound. Hey, Ed! Ed! Call me, Jim? Yeah, I wonder if you'd come over and take a look at this camera. I think there's something wrong with it. Sure, I'd be glad to. Really, dear, it's not this important. All I wanted to do What kind was... of film are you using, Jim? Panchromatic X41? What have you got your speed set at? Uh, speed? What does your light meter indicate? Uh, light meter? <laughs> what you ought to have, Jim, is a... Oh, hi, how are you, Margaret? <laughs> all right, I guess. Jim, trying to get you interested in photography? Well, actually, all yeah. I want... Ed, would you take a look at this camera? I think I've got a leak in my bellows. I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh, Jim, where'd you get this old relic? <laughs> Tell you what you ought to get, Jim. One of those uh, new little Retina Flex 40s, you know, you can pick up one for only a hundred and a quarter now. Yeah, I certainly ought to take advantage of a bargain like that. <laughs> Come over and I'll show you mine. If I've got any film left, I'll let you take a couple of shots. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, well, wait, Jim. I just want to finish off Be that. Be right back, Margaret. Don't let the kids get away. Oh, dear. Mom, I gotta get these pants down to Claude. Take my picture and let me go. How can I? Ed took our camera with him. Here we are, Mommy. Here's Betty. I don't want my picture taken. My hair's a mess. Betty, it doesn't matter. In the first place, all I wanted to do was just finish Mom, off... Mom, can I go help Claude now? <sighs> Might as well. Your father will probably be over at Ed's all the rest of the afternoon. I'll be back quick as I can. All right. Hey, I thought we were all going to have our picture taken. I thought so, too. Come on. We might as well go back in the house. Boy, I sure wasted a good face washing. <laughs> it's not wasted. It doesn't hurt to be clean, even when you're not having your picture taken. Go on in, Betty. I was just thinking, Mother. Well, you can think inside. Come on, Kathy. I was just thinking, what if I do my hair in ringlets all over the top, and then in the back I could... Why don't you leave it the way you've been wearing it? I like it that way. Ralph says it doesn't bring out my personality. Oh. Well, I'm sure he's an expert on that subject. <laughs> Ralph says that there's a definite correlation between how a girl does her hair and her personality. He says he's been making a special study of this to help me. He's got 20 pictures of Marilyn Monroe, 16 of Ava Gardner, 14 of Rita Hayworth. I wonder if that's really why he's got those pictures. <laughs> Hi. Well, Bud, you certainly made that trip in a hurry. How was Claude? I haven't been there yet. Why? What happened? Well, I just remembered something. Claude told me he was in a phone booth, but he didn't tell me where the phone booth is at. <laughs> well, why don't you call him and ask him, stupid? Oh, yeah, sure. Why didn't I think of that? Of all the dumb... Wait a minute. I don't know what number to call. <laughs> hey, open the door, somebody. Bud, help your father. Looks like he's loaded down with a whole camera store out there. Jumping owls. What have you got there, Dad? Well, don't just stand there. Grab some of this stuff. Yeah, okay. What's this, a sun lamp? No, a floodlight. If you're going to take pictures, you might as well do it right. Are you taking it up professionally, Father? No, of course not. Your mother said she wanted some pictures of you kids, so I... How do you like this camera, Margaret? You, uh, didn't buy it, did you? Oh, no, of course, no, of course not. Just borrowed it. Well, good. All I bought was the flash equipment and the floodlights. You bought the flo... What for? Well, Ed had some extra ones, and he let me have them for practically nothing. I understand the nothing. How much is the practically... $35. Jim Anderson. Well, honey, we're going to need all this stuff after we get our own Retina Flex 40. Who said we were going to get a Platinatex 40? Ed says he knows where we can get one for 20% off. <laughs> 
That'll still be $100. And the amount of picture taking we do... Well, that's just it. We don't take pictures because we don't have any good equipment. And we ought to take pictures because the children will never be this age again. We ought to have a record of these golden years. All right, all right. That Ed is some salesman. Who's got golden ears? <laughs> he said years, dopey. Well, come on, let's get this stuff set up. Uh, want to do it here or in the living room? I thought we were going to take them in the backyard. Oh, no. Ed says the only way you could take pictures outside on a day like this is with a double aught Q haze filter. And all he has is a double aught W filter. I don't see how a man could be so ill equipped. <laughs> Father, will I have time to run down to the hairdressers first and get a fast set? Certainly not. My gosh, all we want to do is get a couple of little casual shots. Casual, he says. Well, I'm not going to have my picture taken looking this way. What other way have you got to look? <laughs> oh, Bud, uh, plug this cord in over there. We'll get a couple of casual kitchen shots to warm up and then move on into the living room. Uh, you ought to be in on these too, Margaret. You can be standing by the stove. Yes, we certainly want that in our record of these golden years. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Mother, be thinking what I can do with my hair. How about cutting it off? <laughs> Hello? Who? Oh, yes, he's here. Just a minute. Here, bud, it's for you. Uh-oh, I'll bet I know who that is. Hello? Well, Claude, I started down, but you didn't tell me what phone booth you're in. Drugstore? Okay, uh, I'll be right down as soon as I have my picture taken. Yeah, I'll hurry. Bye. I gotta get right down there, Dad. This'll just take a second, bud. But Claude says his position is getting untenable. Untenable? I didn't think you even knew that word. I don't. <laughs> but Claude says there's two women standing outside the phone booth waiting to use the phone. I see. And one of them has an umbrella with a blunt handle. Well, that's fairly untenable, all right Can I go now, Dad? Sure, just as soon as I get a good shot here But, Dad... All you stand by your mother there And I'll get a light reading here Well, just take the picture And don't fool around with this nonsense, Jim Yeah Well, I can't set the camera Until after I get a light reading Jim, you know there's a much simpler way to do this Yeah, you're right, I'll do it, too I'll call Ed and have him take the pictures No, I mean, get our oh, old wait, camera... Oh, wait, Ed's not home I had to drive Myrtle downtown to shop I know what I can do, though I can call Simpson at the photo gallery. He can tell me how to operate this stuff. Really, Jim? Dad, I... what about Claude? This will just take a second, bud. I've never seen so much fuss over nothing at all. I thought we were going to take some pictures, Mommy. We are, we are, we are. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Simpson, please. Dad. Thank you. Dad. Claude. Mr. Simpson? Uh, this is Jim Anderson, and I... <laughs> Fine, thanks. And I was just going to uh, get a few pictures of the family, but I... Need a little advice on how to operate the equipment. It's a Retinaflex 40. No good at all, huh? Uh-oh. Dad. I see. Uh-huh. Well, now, that does sound like the sensible thing to do. Oh, sure. Well, that'll be fine, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> I appreciate this very much. Goodbye. Well, it's all fixed up now. What did you buy this time? I didn't buy anything. We're going to do this the easy way. Mr. Simpson is sending out a professional photographer to take the pictures. A professional photographer? Jumping creepers. Those pictures usually get on the society page. Now I'll have to go down to the hairdressers. Oh, wait a minute, Betty. I'll go with you. Well, hold on here. I'll... Bud, your good suits at the cleaners. Run by there and see if it's ready. But, Claude... Oh, I've got to have a new dress, too, Mother. I simply have got to. Now, wait a minute. I've got I'll... to get Kathy something cute, too. Come on, Kathy. Oh, boy! Hurry to the cleaners, Bud. Hurry up, Mother. Hey, wait. I'll... Well, how do you like that? All that fuss over absolutely nothing at all. Act two of Father Knows Best after these words. And now here's a word about some of the fine shows you'll hear tomorrow night on the NBC radio network. Comedy rules the roost when Bob Hope presents his fast-paced, typical, topical humor. And tomorrow evening, you'll hear Miss Jane Wyman as guest of the Bob Hope Show. So be sure to listen tomorrow. 
And then stay tuned as Phil Harris and Alice Faye brighten the airwaves with 30 minutes of hilarious comedy and some of the nation's most popular music. Along with Phil and Alice, you'll hear Elliot Lewis and Julia Sabruzio to keep the comedy on a mirthquaking level. Remember, tomorrow and every Friday evening over many of these same stations, it's the Bob Hope Show and the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. Hear them both on the NBC radio network. And now back to Father Knows Best. Remember what I said about trying to finish off those last two exposures on an old roll of film? You can see now that it's fairly dangerous stuff to monkey around with. Margaret's innocent little camera venture has now been pushed into a major project. And the man who did most of the pushing is the most bewildered of all. Like this. But, Margaret, why do you have to go to all this bother and expense when all we want to do is get a couple of casual pictures? Jim, you don't hire a professional photographer to take casual pictures. Does my hair look like anything at all? It looks fine, but I still it's say... It's about you... all Andre could do with it in such short time. He had to practically sneak us in between some of his other appointments. Did Bud get his suit from the cleaners? I don't know. He said he had to take those pants down to Claude in the phone booth. Oh, dear. What time will the photographer be here? Margaret, will you calm down? All we're going to do Mother! is... Mother! I never did find anything real cute for Kathy. I hope what I bought will look all right. Why does she need anything new? Mother! We want a picture of Kathy, not her dress. Jim, snapping a couple of shots in the backyard is one thing. Having portraits taken is an entirely different matter. We'll be sending these pictures to all the relatives Mother, and... Mother, this simply will not do. You said yourself that we ought to have some decent pictures of the children. Mother, this dress simply and utterly and utterly and simply will not do. <laughs> you liked it fine at the store. Oh, it makes me look as though I'm getting dressed up to have my picture taken. <laughs> well, aren't you? Oh, Father, don't be so utterly rectangular. <laughs> Huh? Mother, what could I wear that would make it look as though the camera just happened to catch me in a kind of careless, offhand, homey pose, but very glamorous? Well, how about a smoking jacket and carpet slippers? <laughs> Father. Uh, Jim Bloomers and tennis shoes? <laughs> Father, this is serious. And expensive. So far, these pictures have cost me about $190. Oh, I'll get it. And that doesn't include postage to send them out to all the relatives. Hello? What? Well, stop gibbering so I can understand what you're saying. Oh, well, just a minute. It's Claude Messner, and he wants to know where Bud is. Well, he must be down there by now. What'll I tell him? He sounds pretty frantic. Well, tell him that Bud started down there quite a while ago, so he certainly should be there... Wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here he is now. Hurry up, bud. Claude's on the phone. Oh, good. I want to talk to him. He wants to talk to you, too. Hello? Well, don't jump out of your shirt, Claude. <laughs> I was down there, but there's such a long line waiting to use the phone, I couldn't get up to the phone booth. <laughs> this may work into a plot for a full-length novel. I tried to, Claude, but every time I tried to move up in the line, everybody get mad at me. Especially that lady with the umbrella. <laughs> Claude may be the first man in history to starve to death in a phone booth. <laughs> well, Claude, it didn't matter anyway, because I forgot the pants. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll get him down there right away. Bye. Wait a minute, Bud. Where are you going? I gotta rescue Claude. Well, you can't now. The photographer will be here any minute. But, Mom... But how are you going to get into the phone booth this time if you couldn't when you were down there before? We got a plan. Oh? When I walk in the drugstore, I'm supposed to yell fire and everybody will run out. <laughs> <laughs> what they'll probably do is all try to get into the phone booth to report the fire. <laughs> Bud, did you get your suit from the cleaners? I haven't had time to yet. Let's see now. I guess the Davenport there would be the best place for the picture. You children could be sitting, and your father and I could stand behind you. Mother, we're not making an old tin type. I'd better get a straw hat and a cane. <laughs> you know, that Davenport looks a little shabby. Now, whoa, hold it right there. <laughs> we're not going to buy a new Davenport. 
I was just thinking what Aunt Maddie will say when she gets one of these pictures and starts going over it with a magnifying glass, as she always does. I don't care what Aunt Maddie says. This thing has gotten completely out of hand, Margaret, and I can't figure out why. Jim, whose idea was it to call the photographer? Well, I talked to him, but my gosh, all I was trying Dad, to do was I've to get... Dad, I just got to get down there and rescue Claude. Wait a minute, bud. There's the photographer now. You can go as soon as he's through. Gee, Mom, it'll take him an hour to get set up. No, it won't. Betty, go answer the door. I don't want him to see me looking like this. Hi. Anybody home? Oh, it's Ed Davis. Come on in, Ed. I just got home and discovered you'd left your old camera over at my place, Jim. Here you are. Oh, that old thing. How'd you come out with the pictures? Well, uh, to tell the truth, Ed, we, we didn't take any. Didn't take any. Well, I, I wasn't too sure how to use the camera. It's a separate job on the market. And Margaret wanted to get some really good portraits of the kids. I wanted to. So I called uh, Simpson, and he's sending out Simpson! A... Oh, Jim, 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 why did you do that? Well, no, Margaret look, Jim, wanted... by the time you wind up with the enlargements and the color tints and the fancy folders, it'll cost you a fortune. It already has. Well, Jim, that alone will run you a good 55 or $60. It will? Certainly. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do now. We've already called him. Well, cancel it. Tell him not to come. I'll call him for you. Where's your phone? Oh, uh, well, Ed, That's really... That's all right, we... Margaret. I'm just glad to do this for you. I'll take those pictures for you myself with my little retina. Dad. I'll, I'll get you better pictures, and I'll get you both color slides and prints, and it won't run you... Well, it won't run you much over, uh, 45. <laughs> 45? Dad. Well, maybe 50. You mind if I use your phone in the den, huh? Excuse me, Mr. Davis, but can I make a quick call first? It's awful important. Oh, sure, son. Go ahead. I just got a call Claude at the drugstore. You say he's at the drugstore? Yeah. Well, good. You tell him to pick up a half dozen flashbulbs, huh? It depends on how close they are to the phone booth. I'll get the floodlights hooked up. Where are they, Jim? Uh, in the kitchen. Okay, I'll get them. Hello, Claude. Jim, are you going to let Ed do this? Isn't this Claude Mesner? I don't know what to think. He is? What happened? Ed's a pretty good photographer, I think. Gee, well, thanks. Bye. Well, Claude finally got out of the phone booth. Well, good. He's in the hospital now. <laughs> he is? What happened? Lady hit him over the head with an umbrella. <laughs> Well, I don't blame her. That was a dumb thing for him to do in the first place. I wonder if he'll need those pants to get out of the hospital. Okay, got the lights. Plug them in over there, will you, Jim? Yeah. You through with the phone, bud? Yeah. Good. Now I'll get hold of Simpson. Oh, uh, Ed, maybe we ought to let him uh, go ahead and... Don't you worry, Margaret. Don't you worry. I can handle this all right. No trouble at all. Oh, hello, Simpson. We'll put him on. Okay, Mommy. I'm all dressed up. Is the man here yet? No, Angel. Simpson, say, I'm calling for Jim Anderson. He's changed his mind on the picture, so just cancel it. Hey, is it off again? Shh. That's the second time today I've washed for nothing. <laughs> well, Jim feels you're a little high, Simpson. I didn't say that. Well, you can fight that out with Jim. Oh, fine. <laughs> fine? Well, that sounds fair enough. Sure, sure. Okay, goodbye. Okay, Jim, I fixed that up. You certainly did. Uh, Simpson wants you to pay five bucks for the canceled appointment, but you're still saving money. Ah, now then, let's get lined up here. Betty, how about you sitting in the rocking chair there? The rocking chair? Yeah, that should make a nice picture with that sweet old-fashioned dress you have on. Old-fashioned? <laughs> By George, you look just like a flower from an old lavender bouquet. Oh, brother. Bud, sit at her feet there. Huh? And sort of rest one arm on her lap. I better go see how Claude is. Kathy, you stand back of Bud. Ed, don't you think now, please, it would be... Jim, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Kathy, you stand back of Bud. Put one arm around Betty. Your other hand on Bud's shoulder. How cozy. Before I go hugging Betty, I want to know if we're going to take these pictures or are we still fooling around? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, Jim, flip the switch on the floodlights and I'll get a light reading here. Okay, here goes. 
Oh, oh, what was that? Uh, something blew out there. Where's your fuse box, Jim? Uh, right inside the basement door. Okay, I'll give it a look-see. A look-see. I had a feeling something like this would happen. Well, I couldn't help it. Mother, do I really look like a sweet old-fashioned rocking chair girl? Just an old flower and an old lavender bouquet. <laughs> oh, keep quiet. Uh-oh, if that's Simpson, tell him I'm not here. I'll get it. I don't feel much like fighting right now. Hello? Oh, how are you, Claude? I almost wish I'd spent this day with Claude in the phone booth. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, I'll, I'll get him over to you right away. Bye. Where is he? Still in the hospital? Yeah, but he wasn't hurt. He just pretended he was so they'd carry him out of the drugstore on a stretcher so nobody'd see his ripped pants. <laughs> that kid's thinking all the time. But now he needs some good ones to get home from the hospital. I'll see you later. Oh, well, wait, bud. We may take some pictures. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, Jim. You mean there's more? Every single fuse is blown, and I think there's a short somewhere, so you better call an electrician. <laughs> well, that's just dandy. So I guess we can't shoot the pictures now, but, uh, well, maybe we can get some some other time. Yeah, huh? yeah, fine. Well, thanks anyway, Ed. Oh, don't thank me. I haven't done anything. <laughs> You've done a great deal more than you realize. <laughs> well, I'm glad to do it. So long. So long. <laughs> Well, now what? Twice I washed my face today. Can I deliver the pants now? Wait, I just got a good idea. Uh-oh. There are a couple of pictures left on this old camera of ours. Why don't we go out in the backyard and finish off this roll? <laughs> the Andersons will be back in just a moment. Monday means music on NBC. And here are some of the wonderful programs you'll hear next Monday evening when you set your dial to the NBC radio network. Gordon McRae and Mimi Benzel will bring you the Gypsy Baron as the Railroad Hour's special musical offering. Soprano Patrice Munsell will grace the voice of Firestone guest spotlight, and Ezio Pinza will be the guest soloist on the telephone hour. Remember, you always hear the finest programs on the NBC radio network. And now, back to the Andersons. Well, it's been a pretty rugged day. But Jim finally solved everything with his brilliant suggestion of finishing off those last two pictures in their old camera. As a matter of fact, that's what the Andersons are doing right now. They're in the backyard, grouped around the maple tree, as Jim focuses the camera like this. Okay, steady now. I'll get this other shot and we'll be all through. Dad, I gotta deliver the pants. Steady, bud. Straighten up, Betty. Don't look quite so glamorously sloppy. That's it. Don't make faces, Kathy. I'm just smiling. Oh. Hold it. Now, here we go. There. All over. Now, wasn't that much simpler than all that fall to roll you were going through, Margaret? <laughs> oh, yes, much. It always seems the best way to do a thing is... Uh-oh. What's the matter? Somebody left the time exposure on. The film is ruined. Oh, no. Well, I'll go over to Ed's and borrow a camera from him. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> And we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Gene Vanderpile, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Barney Phillips. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, is written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on the NBC Radio Network.